Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner, and this is stage five of the Giro 2021. Now, yesterday was a hard, miserable stage, cold, mountainous at the finish. We had battles for the GC yesterday, battles for the stage, battle for the pink jersey. I mean, it was crazy. The stage we had yesterday, and everybody's tired. They want a rest today. Plus, with it being pancake flat, 177 kilometers, so 110 miles long, sunshine, not much wind out there. All the riders know it's going to be a field sprint. It's a day for the sprinters. There's at least five, if not six, seven, eight teams back there that would want a field sprint. So they're all going to be able to have strength to put guys on the front and just keep it smooth and steady. We hit kilometer zero. Right away, two riders take off, and they're not given much time. Israel Startup Nation is directly on the front. Maximum time I saw was about five minutes. Now, from kilometer 117 to 106, that five minutes completely evaporates. And that's because the two guys up front, they're not happy with that. They're really upset when the field does not give them a longer leash to just two guys on a small team. They have no chance to make it to the finish. They're not even going to try. So when there's a little bit of acceleration from the field back there for sprint for sprint points, they're going to soak up the two riders in the front there and they're going to evaporate five minutes in a matter of 10 kilometers. Next thing you know, we're all back together. Then with 70 kilometers to go, it's Simone Pelot and Davide Gaburo who are in the front move and they're trying to get off and stay off to the finish. It's the same teams that were just out there, just now just different riders. It's comical almost to watch it from the couch. But they'll go out there. Simone Pelot will see him always in the break. He didn't want to be in the break today. He wanted to save his legs, but he's in there anyways, and now he doesn't have a choice. These two guys are actually putting some force on the pedals, and they're trying to make this stick. They'll, they'll get a little bit of help back there from AG2R rider when he bridges across with about 25 kilometers to go, but it's still not enough power. The group back there with Lotto and Albacine Phoenix have kept everything under control. They haven't given given Polo much room, a minute, minute and 10 seconds at the max. So the speed on today's stage has really been a recovery day. Now, they keep talking about it being stressful and nervous and stuff in the group. I wouldn't call it really nervous in the group. I would call it more attentive. I say the, the directors back there are just telling their team to stay at the front but when you watch it on TV, it's not like there's a battle all the way from curb to curb for this whole race. There's always a little bit of space. That's causing a little bit of speed, but it's not nervous. I wouldn't call it nervous. It's more just all the directors want their teams at the front, but everybody is still pretty calm. If you watch it, they're still chatting with each other. They're still uh, eating, drinking all the time. It's not that curb to curb where guys are jumping up through the gutters to pass or in the gravel or on the sidewalks and stuff. So I don't want to use the word nervous. I just say that the directors in the car are clearly telling their teams to stay at the front. But it's not really a fight for the front because the road is so large. I see it, you'll see it even at one point in time. Riders are going back there to return a banana to the commissaire's car because they don't want to litter the banana peel. I almost started, fell off the couch laughing when I'm like, you can't even throw a banana peel out there? I mean, this is crazy. You got to go back and return a banana to the car so that you don't litter out there. Insane in my, in my book to think you can't drop some food or a banana out there. You got to waste energy and going back to the car. Now things start getting really excited when we're under 20K to go, and then that's when I believe the race gets nervous. You see a little bit more panic and a lot more push on the pedals. But the whole 150 kilometers before that, I think is a nice recovery day, which the GC guys will like. Now with 20K to go, things start getting interesting because at 15K to go, we're gonna see Pavel Sivakov, and he's gonna crash when he hits a tree. I think Taking a guess here from the pictures, looks like he overlaps with his teammate Ineos wheel just in front of him. That gets his attention on trying to keep his bike upright. I think the branch was hanging down low and he probably caught the branch with the upper part of his body and next thing you know it sent him spinning on the ground. His GC aspirations are over. Race still gets exciting at under five kilometers to go. I think about four and a half. They come up to an island. And I'm going to take a little bit of an educated guess here who it was, but it looks like Joe Dombrowski, as they come up to the island, they got a police marshal there. He's probably blowing the whistle and he's wearing the vest. Joe Dombrowski is already on the left side and there's a left turn coming up. So he's in a good position there to just stay where he is. And he looks like he hesitates and then changes his mind and decides to go to the right. 
when he does, if I'm getting this correctly, it looks like he's going to clip the marshal there. That's gonna send him spinning and on the ground. When he goes on the ground, it's gonna be none other than Mikhail Landa, Bahrain Victorious rider that put on a show for us yesterday that clearly has good form and was going to be in a fight at this year's GC goes down right after he hits Joe Dombrowski's bike or Joe Dombrowski himself. That'll take Bahrain victorious rider Mikhail Landa out of the race and that's the end. He got one day to show here at the Giro his great form and now he's going home. Joe Dombrowski will get up but he's not going to finish with the front group. He was sitting high up on the general classification and you got to wonder with a rider of his ability on tomorrow's stage had the racing been a little slower at the end of tomorrow's stage and not a GC battle, he may have been in the race leader's jersey at the finish of, yesterday, of tomorrow's stage. Now he lost more time. He's out of the top 10. There's no chance for that. We'll have to see him again in later stages battling for the mountains classification. But today he's beat, it, beat up and battled from today's crash. It's crazy crash and it happens often when as riders... We make quick decisions very fast. It's like when you're watching the squirrel run across the street on your car and all of a sudden he does that little dance back and forth and decides to split backwards and then you end up driving over him with the wheels on your car. Now, it's almost the same thing as this bike racers. I had it happen to me many, many times. You're coming down, you're in a good line, everything would be safe and then all of a sudden you see something that makes you want to go the other direction. If I'm catching it right from the video, it looks like he had enough room to clear that marshal if he just stayed the left side and then does that little hesitation and moves right and he's going to clip that marshal. Send the marshal to the ground, hurting, and of course himself. And it's going to affect his race at this year's Giro d'Italia. Now up front, the battle's finally on and we get under two kilometers to go and it's Lotto Sudol that's up the front there. They got Caleb Ewan and they're keeping him out of trouble. They got three guys on the front. First one pulls off, leaves Caleb Ewan with just one guy in front. At this point in time with two kilometers to go, Caleb Ewan knows this is not where he wants to be, but it's a safe spot because it's a very technical finish as they'll come into the city and loop around with a final right turn at about 900 meters before the line. So this whole point in time, Caleb Ewan with two kilometers to go, this is not perfect, but he knows he can stay out of trouble and he knows he can just slow the pace down eventually and get behind one of the sprint teams. Next sprint team that comes up is Bora Hansgro with about 1.5 kilometers to go. And it's two Bora Hansgro riders with Peter Sagan, about two guys behind him. So he's in a good spot sitting about fifth or sixth wheel back there when they hit the 900, 900 meter right hand turn to the finish. They'll go in there. The Bora Hansgro rider on the front will pull off and it looks like it's Daniel Oss that's on the front. He'll do a great job and it's lined up with Bora Albacine Phoenix and Sebastian Milano. And Milano's UAE Team Emirates, he's doing the sprint back there for Gaveria, but Gaveria is nowhere to be found. So Fernando Gaveria is sitting too far back, and we'll see when the Albacine Phoenix rider takes his pull, and we're talking about now under 600 meters to go, the Albacine Phoenix rider takes his pull, and Milano looks left and right and does not see Fernando Gaviria anywhere, so he knows he has to pull out and cause a little bit of chaos. He wants it to slow down. This is a spectacular ride for Milano. Remember, he could just do the sprint himself, but he knows he doesn't have that speed to win, and he's paid to help his sprinter, Fernando Gaviria, win the stage. So he can't help him by keeping the race fast for Peter Sagan on his wheel and leading him out. He'll swing off. This is a beautiful lead out tactic. If Fernando Gaviria couldn't find Milano's wheel along with Max Riquezzi, then you just got to pull out and cause some chaos. So when Milano does, it causes chaos. It slows down. Peter Sagan's back there and he's watching the Alpacine Phoenix wheel open up, but he knows if he closes that wheel, it's over. There's no chance that Peter Sagan can win, so he's not going to close it. He'll follow and he'll just sit up and we'll see the Albacine Phoenix rider slightly right away. Then we'll see Kofidis take the front again. And Simone Consone has been doing an amazing lead out for Ellie Viviani. I've seen Ellie Viviani in each one of these sprint stages at this year's Giro. And Ellie Viviani has been in absolutely perfect condition and with the chance to win most of these flat stages. And he just doesn't have the legs. But the Kofidis rider, Simone, has put him in excellent position on today's stage. He'll fly up the right side next to the barriers. 
Now in, and now behind them, Peter Sagan is moving over right to try to grab that wheel because he knew he couldn't go with the Albacene Phoenix or he's going to lose for short. He moves right, slots over, and it's Caleb Ewan that's back there. And Tim Merlay and Caleb Ewan will come together and start smacking with each other. This causes Tim Merlay's foot to slip out of the pedal. Either it was hit or he missed a shift or the gears just jumped and his foot slipped out. What caused it for sure, I don't know, but you can clearly see his right foot comes out when they start bumping. That's going to destroy any chance for Tim Merlay to get stage two win here at this year's Juro. Now, Caleb Ewan, he's fantastic. If you see how hard those two hit, and nobody's fault when they hit, it's just bike racing. They just come together like that. But when you see the hit, and then you see Caleb Ewan not affected by it at all, in front, he has two Kofidis riders in front, Peter Sagan. He's going to fly past Peter Sagan and take up, take up to the wheel all the way there of L.A. Viviani and then ditch to the left and go between the wheel of Peter Sagan and L.A. Viviani. Now, on the left side, when those two were bumping back there, it's Giacomo Nizzolo that's flying all the way up on the left side of the road and he's moving hard right. He's got a clean line to move right, so he's not, he's not making a penalty here by any means. But he's moving hard right, and it looks like he's finally gonna, going to get his stage win in the Giro. Giacomo Nizzolo and I were teammates back in the day. He's incredibly fast, but not one of the pure, pure sprinters that we're used to seeing in these Grand Tours. He's been second 10 times before this stage in the Giro. He even won a stage in the Giro, but they had it taken away from him. So officially, he's never won. He looks like he's going to the line there to grab the win, but it's not going to happen because it's the Australian Caleb Ewan back there who's doing an amazing, just unbelievable job of flying through riders and weaving in and out just like last year's Tour de France early stage win that he had in the first week of the Tour. It looks almost identical. Total chaos, bumping wheels, flying up the side of the fence, dodging between wheels. It's none other than Peter Sagan and L.A. Viviani that he's split in between. He never touches anyone, never, never hits the shoulders after he starts his sprint. Clean all the way to the line. Has a small little bump that I'm sure is helping Caleb Ewan there in, in terms of keeping his speed on Giacomo Nizzolo. He'll come up on the side of Giacomo Nizzolo and pass him. And it's just a fantastic win for the Australian Caleb Ewan there to get his first stage win at a Grand Tour in 2021. Now remember, he's trying for a stage win in each of the Grand Tours this year. So it's a tall ask, but he's an amazing sprinter. And when you watch a stage like today, he loves chaos and he's fabulous at it. Today's stage just reminded me of his spectacular win at last year's Tour de France. It looked identical where he's just all over the road, but cleanly over the road and just gaining and passing riders like they're standing still. Fabulous win for Lotto Sudol. Bad luck for Mikhail Landa. We're going to lose and bad luck for us fans at home, right? Because we know there was a battle happening on tomorrow's stage there with Mikhail Landa and Egon Bernal. Like and subscribe, The Butterfly Effect. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys real soon on what should be a fantastic stage tomorrow.